start recording. Just said that this is our rare and it's pretty terrible. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to first pick a Mama Yeti. That doesn't seem Lava Shaper also also reasonable, but I kinda I kinda want to snag the Yeti. Yeah, let's do it. Waiting for pack two. Waiting for pack two. Do, 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 do. Waiting for pack two. How's it going, Ace? Um, so we first picked Mama. I don't think... I want to commit to a second threshold just yet. Mama hopefully means we're going to be aggressive. Brute, if we get a baby yet, he could theoretically be played on two. I think I'm going to grab that. I could also see Bladesman being fine. If I wanted to go into a second color, uh, Dawn Scout's medium as a two drop. Ambershire War Rider's fine, but usually you end up with too many fives in this format, it feels like. So I think I, I, think I want the Brute here. Ruthless Intimidator is an excellent pickup here. Just quality two drop. Sapper's Wallbuster is medium removal, um, but uh, I think I'd rather take the uncommon here. It's a quality two. And again, still haven't committed to a second color. We branch out into a second color at this point. Um, there's nothing great in this pack for Ruby. Uh, Valor Rising is medium. I don't think I want to commit to a double diamond card, especially at four. This Dread Harvest could be okay. Just go like Ruby Wild. Uh, Dread Harvest is going to triggering Assault. It's decent with Brute. It also sends the message that this archetype is not open in this pack, so I kind of like taking that. Hopefully we'll open some spring dancers at some point here. Um... I might play one Crackling Magma. I definitely would board it in in some matchups. None of these cards are particularly great. Strength of the Ardent's okay. I think I'm going to grab the Crackling Magma. Definitely, I don't think we're going to start it, but we'll put it, we'll put it over here for now. Hey, Zerglish. Mm. Remember, we're not married to Wild yet, so still kind of looking at other things that we have going on in these packs. 
Jet Cadet is not the worst, but Ruby Sapphire doesn't seem particularly strong on average in this format. Tinkertron is okay. I might grab this. It allows us to splash something if we want. Splash more easily. It's a fine two drop or three drop. Let's grab that. Crackling Clash is pretty good. Target troop you control battles and opposing troop. Our troops are probably big enough for that on average. No good. No good ruby cards in here. Yeah, I'm gonna take the removal. This pack, God, it's, these packs have been bad. Scrounge deals four damage to each opposing champion. That doesn't seem great. Battlement Spearman is fine. We might have an Ardent sub theme at some point. Evening Waffle. Cottontail Bruiser often trades down, but it's the best card in the pack for us. Am I supposed to pivot into... This is an okay Sapphire card. Nah, I'm just going to grab I'm just going to stay, stay the course here. Hopefully we get a baby here for Mammy at some point. We've got two more packs to go. We're not getting a baby in this pack, which is a little sad. Life Swell. I just got... I just got the first of the Pokemon cards that I ordered in the mail. Look at that. I got some paper paper cards for me to sit here and flick between my hands. Um, I'm going to pick up the Ambershire War Rider. I don't really want a second Crackling and Scout the Wilds. I don't think is very good. The drafting in Hex is much better now than it used to be. So you draft in a pod with a timer, just like a traditional Magic draft or Magic Online draft. Then the matches you play are at your leisure. Uh, none of these cards in here are particularly great. Nothing we'd even splash. I guess I'll take the Uncommon. The Unplayable Uncommon. Yeah, again, just not a whole lot going on here. Got nine cards out of this pack that are potentially playable. That's plenty. Got two more packs to go. Got to get more playables out of here. That's fine. How's it going, the tree boy? Yeah, we'll take a strength of the ardent. May or may not play that. Cute combat trick. Technically, reach can create a valor too for some lasting effect. Yeah, the top eight for the CCS is draft, so, you know, theoretically we were practicing for for that, assuming that the constructed deck that the squad and I have put together is reasonable. We'll take a Siegesaurus over a Livid Buffalo for sure. We got this Dread Harvest here, so maybe the Siegesaurus is going to be alive. Look at that, plenty of playables. Take the Dread Launcher and put it in the reserves. Pick your pick your favorite glyph. Yeah, we're so ferocious. Bomb rare, bomb rare. Ah, oh, that's a little sad. Um. <laughs> How high do we pick the Baby Yeti? Is it greedy to not pick the Baby Yeti? It's probably greedy. Not, I'm almost certainly not going to pick the Baby How many Underworld troops do I have? 
Not enough for this driver, probably. Definitely not. Uh, I'm going to grab the fireball here. I think that's first pickable. We'll hope the baby comes back around. Watch us just, like, never see another baby and just, like, cry ourselves silently to sleep tonight. Blazing hammer. Excellent quality removal and reach. Definitely snap pick that up. First picked mama. Did not first pick baby. Don't you dare pick that baby. Idiot. Yeah, I know. It's coming back around. It's coming. It's coming back around. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. So the, I just mentioned you must have topped it right before I said it, uh, that the top eight of the CCS this weekend is draft, so I like to do a little bit of practicing. We have two two of the people in my play group were spent a ton of time drafting, so they've got a bunch of notes for us, but I like to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of practice in myself before before an actual top eight. And if we make the top eight cut tomorrow after the Swiss, we'll probably draft again tomorrow night. Um Yep, happy to pick up a baby itty here just to guarantee that we have it. We also have a brute here, so if we end up with, I might even play multiple baby itties, honestly. Yeti into brute, especially if we like pick up a second brute on the way around, that would be hot. I should probably find something less valuable than these Zaranesses to shuffle, but they're here and I'm just like flicking them in my hand. Probably should keep that away from the microphone. Another Crackling Clash. I think I'm going to pick up the Stinkhorn here. It's fine for triggering Brute and Siege Source early. It's also basically a removal spell that trades up. Crackling Clash isn't that good of a removal spell in this deck. Like, like we have Mama Yeti and a couple of things that are a little bit bigger, but it's not going to kill a lot of stuff. Is this a Lysander deck? This might be a Lysander deck. Another Stinkhorn, sure. And another Crackling Clash. I don't know which of those I want to play. It's probably... It's probably just another Stinkhorn, honestly. Hopefully we can pick up another Brute here. This is a common, so... I mean, these one-drops for the Brute is fantastic. Right. Um, I think I'll take a trained trash meter here. The Wrangler could also be okay. Gotta remember, this brute in our curve is basically a three drop with the number of twos and ones that we have. So I guess Smash Magus isn't the worst thing in the world either. Perhaps I actually want that. Maybe my first double wild card. This card's pretty powerful. Yeah, I'm gonna snap. I'm gonna snap him up. Another fireball. Yep, sign me up. I don't know what pick priority fireball should be, but triple ruby's a little tough. Perhaps the fact that I'm on fireball means I want to go 10-7 on my resources. Tinkertron helps us cheat a little bit. Tinkertron makes a threshold of our choice. And exhausts one of the times. None of these cards are great. Probably not playing anything in here. Just cut a blood card. Mm, 
another baby itty. I'm just going to pick this up now, just in case we find a mama later. If we if we even get a second brute, I'll probably play the two babies, just because uh, brute gets cheaper every time you attack with something. So if you have baby on one with this in your opener, this goes to a two drop on your second turn. So you can just like turn two, four, three, go. I think I just want another two drop, or two drops are a little bit light. I think that this this is the better card, but I think my curve dictates that I want a basher. Smash Magus is really good with Crackling Clash, and think about that. Dread Harvest also helps enable it, which is nice. Just in case we play a matchup where Magma is really good and have two to board in. <laughs> Squeaker is almost never being active. We're probably playing seven or like eight tops, but we're probably also not playing anything else in this pack. So, actually, there might be an argument that a vanilla three two with a three two with crush is better than this four one. You can see that argument being true. Like occasionally, this is going to be a four-three. I'm just all right. I'll take that over the crackling magma. Never, never playing three of those. I don't think. Really not in love with Bruiser. I'm gonna trim them for now. We got a third pack here, so we're gonna end up having cuts. Do I want the surly brawler or when this enters play steals two? Okay, I guess this technically has upside if I have multiple bashers. Halt, who goes there? The old sky lookout. Bottle master. Mommy Yeti. Mommy Yeti. Another fireball. Sure. As much as this is a bomb that I'm going to hate to lose to, I think I just want a third fireball. Let's like light them up. Definitely playing 10 ruby shards in here. Not particularly close. Must play 10. Alright, look at target opposing champion's hand, reveal a card that secretly gets, when you play this, destroy each of the starting turn that deals 2 damage to each. That card's not particularly good. Uh, as much as I'd like a double trouble, because, well, double trouble, um, triple wild is prohibitive. I don't think I want to sap for busters with 3 fireballs, I think I'm gonna, t I think I'm gonna take the horn draft. I would definitely board this and at some point and these other cards strike me as cards that I want to play in my main deck. So we need two more cards that I would like to play. Fire in the hole definitely fills that requirement. Just another piece of quality removal that also benefits from our Various assault troops, various assault card, assault enablers. There was a third brute count brasher in there, which hopefully that card will just wheel around. That was only the what third pack out of that pack, so we're gonna see that pack again. Brasher is not a very high pick percentage. Just stack some of these knolls up and go to town. Rust and Rune's a card we might board in. I don't think this is a spiritualist deck. I'm pretty sure our curse is just too high for that. 
I wouldn't hate playing this Ardent Decree. Maybe this curve's low enough that I can, like, play Ardent Decree and then only play 16 shards. That's greedy, but it sounds like something I'd do. Let's give that a go. Definitely not playing a third baby yeti. Huh, are we again just like not interested in playing anything in this pack? It seems what it's like. I guess we could still theoretically find more mamas, but let's cut that for now. <laughs> All the babies, really glad we didn't first pick a baby last pack. Scrounge, Rage 2. Yeah, that's a top end bomb. That may or may not be playable. Take another Brute Crown Basher. We're going to draw all three brew crowns one of these games, and the second one is going to deal two, and the third one is going to deal four, and it's just going to be finger pistols everywhere. Maybe we'll get another one of these in that pack that we passed earlier. We're definitely just, like, snap-taking every brute crown basher that's not, like, a pick over a Mama Yeti or a Brute. I've got decent removal in this draft. We've got three fireballs, a blazing hammer, a fire in the hole, and a crackling clash, so that's kind of nice. Um... Are three fireballs enough to take a primal prism? Maybe. I don't know that we're going to play this, but we'll definitely draft it. I'm going to put this in the board for now just so I have an idea. So this is all my, these are all my playables right now. So if I'm adding playables, I need to cut playables. I know I said I'd never play a third, but let's just grab that for now. I'm going to play 16 shards because we have an ardent decree here to help fix. Because I want to be able to play these fireballs consistently. We'd like to also play the smash magus alongside playing these fireballs consistently. So... Almost there, a few more picks, we have 44 cards, we got 7 more. Hey look, that Brew Crown Basher came back around, oh, I wonder how many of those we passed in this draft. Now we're going to just draw all 4 of them, just like 4 of these and 3 shards in the opener, just first one, second one does 2, third one does 4, fourth one does 6, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's sweet sweet Brew Crown Basher value. Oh, I'm going to take the change course. Someone might have been depending on that to wheel with how bad all of the uh, cards are. I'm going to cut the Spearman because we're not really defensive. This Rocket rocket Ridge Rider could be a good, just like perfect top end bomb. We have, only, we have minimal scrounge in this deck.
This is probably a Lysander deck. I really don't like any of the wild champions in this format. Chat so quiet this evening. Thinking this is gonna be our main deck. I'm not I'm not playing a triple green card in my triple fireball. I'm triple green champion in my triple fireball deck. Yeah. Yeah, Elk, Elk's a fine champion. It's just he's hard to play a lot of the time because, like, the base wild decks aren't particularly good on average, it seems like. Five, and then ten. Ruby gives us eleven, twelve Ruby altogether. Hey! Wada Maiden with the five-month free sub. Thank you for the continued support. Almost half a year. You're, you're not wrong. Thank you for coming on back, and I appreciate you continuing to support my content here. How... How wrong is it to pick Angus for our champion? This feels like it could be an Angus or a Savus deck. I feel like just get to four charges and Angus them isn't completely unreasonable. Thoughts? I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for thoughts before we hit play game. But could this be? Could this be an Angus deck? I'm gonna pull pull my group. Async drafting is the async draft gameplay is fantastic. The only way this draft format could get better is if the drafting part itself was asynchronous as well. Board control is important and limited. What does that even mean? It, is, that, is that a nod towards one champion or the other? Because I don't think any of these wild... This is the only playable one, but it's not, it's not playable because we have... We don't have triple wild. I could see Savis. Yeah, Savis is probably the conservative choice. All right, let's play one. We'll save us. Would like to go first, especially against Scorn. Uh, yeah, see, it's fine. We've got double Brute Crown Basher. So Brute Crown Basher says when you play. Another Brute Crown Basher or a Sharp Tooth Nasher, which doesn't exist yet. That's going to be a set six card that they referenced. Um, you get to deal two damage to a champion or troop. And we drafted four of this little bad null. He's so, he's so angry, and our opponent is playing Twilight Reverent Gorn. So hopefully we can dodge their Twilight Reverence. That's terrifying. Or maybe pressure them enough to go under it. We run some shards. We actually have two, both of our, two of our three assault cards, or two of our two. I can't remember if we have two or three assault cards in our opener, so that's pretty, it's pretty good for us. We're just making some dreadlings, sure. Hopefully we draw a wild so we can play this squeaker out. That would be ideal. All right, we drew a ruby. Um, I think I want to save this until I can potentially kill something with it. So I'm going to go ahead and attack with this and then play the brute out here. Also puts the most damage up pressure on the table, which is nice.
Any shard there was better than no shard. Um, seriously? All right. As I say, watch me get punished for this. I feel like people don't call enough on those. But maybe that's just wrong, especially because it gave him a chance to use his resources there. Drawing wild there is good because I get to play the feral squeaker out again and again, hold this back. Yeah, I'm probably just not supposed to call there and just be on the aggressive. He'd be down to 14 right now if I hadn't called there. 15, he'd be down to 15 and we'd have 9 power on the board. Alright, sure, take wing is something to take note of. Just don't, don't Twilight River me on 4, have a heart. Have a heart, let us play a game. Scrounge card, explosion, sure. Probably just playing this out next turn. And just like doming him with it. Yeah, geez. So he would have explosioned my other guy this turn, but he'd be at 15, and then we'd be hitting him for 5 this turn, down to 10. Gosh, that feels bad. Uh, and again, save us his power is not a power that you want to just jam. You want to hold on to that for when you have something good to do with it. Unfortunately, we do not have... We do not have a, uh, a second wild threshold, so we cannot play the Siegesaurus out just yet. If we brick on something to play the Siegesaurus with next turn, we might hammer save us. And again, if he rips Twilight River in here, it's definitely on me. I just shouldn't have blocked. That's annoying. Definitely been that. Oh, this fireball's real good. So Taste for Blood would give this plus two, plus two, and life drain permanently. We're just going to get that right on out of there. That's probably a game-winning fireball. It's at least not a game-losing fireball. We definitely would have been way out of this if our opponent would have... Let's play this out and start crunching here. So our opponent would still be up, would be up a take flight, but we'd be up a, up a troop here if I'd have just not made that block. Maybe I should be scared of dreadlings like most people in this game. Smash Magus, huh? That's pretty good. I'm going to crunch with both of these here. If he wants to trade the front half of this and take seven, I think I'm okay with that exchange. And again, not, uh, not going to hammer this just to hammer it. I'm going to wait until I have a shard or a card that I don't really want in my hand. Now both of these troops are lethal here. Concedes. Sweet. Um, Crackling Magma is actually not the worst. He has a lot of Dreadling effects. Uh, he also um, he has a lot of Dreadling effects. It also likely has Twilight Reverend in their deck, and Crackling Magma is a quick speed way to deal deal damage to Twilight Reverend, which is reasonable. It makes them makes them hammer their life total a little bit more on it. So I think I want to. No, this is non-flying, right? Nah, never mind. Never mind. It's without flight. Someone in chat's going to tell me in a second here that it's without flight, and then I'll get there shortly after it because of the delay, but I figured it out on my own. I just like the record to reflect. This hand's pretty bad. Uh, I might keep this hand if I had double wild for the Smash Magus, but the fact that we don't, combine with the fact that it's just so shard heavy. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this on the draw. I've got the Ardent Decree. Watch us just get punished for this not being a shard. But this hand, we need to draw a shard either way, because we need double ruby. Let's just be a professional and draw ruby on one. We've got ten of them in the deck. That's unfortunate. So we'll play this. We'll play Ardent Decree and make ourselves a Ruby Threshold, and then we can at least play this Baby Yeti out next turn. Worst case scenario, we get the last game on the play. Dread Botanist. Yep. Hey, there's Ruby Shard. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this Dread Harvest here. And then next turn, 
I can play this, and then when this attacks, it'll trigger Assault, and then the Fire in the Hole can kill this Dread Botanist. Attack for two, yep. What you got? All right, there's a two, two. All right, that's free. These baby eddies don't do anything in the face of a two, two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attack with this. I want to play Tinkertron. This give me a resource. Also makes Fireball castable next turn if we draw it. Same reason I could just play this and this though as well. Kind of want to do that. Yeah, let's play the two two block Dreadlings. Because we've all learned I should block Dreadlings, right? Lessons I haven't learned for one hundred. I might just keep these baby eddies in my hand for save as activation. Honestly, at this point. No attack with this means I'm going to block here. If he had a trick, he would have shoved with that, I think. Taste for blood, sure. So this is at two. Yep. So let's play this out. Does this cost a resource? It does. So this can give me a wild threshold, which triggers dread harvest. And then I can play this, which triggers dread harvest, and I can play this, or sorry, this trigger these trigger assault. And then I can go ahead and attack with the three of these. And then after I've declared attackers, before they get to blockers, we can fire in the whole this for five. Let's get that on out of there. He'll get to eat a baby yeti and we'll push two points of damage in. I guess possibly I just could have attacked there instead of... Doing the tricksy stuff. Probably gonna rage this, I assume. God bless America. Multiple taste for bloods. That's really good. Uh, at least I have a ruthless intimidator to follow it. Follow that up with. Yep, take some damages. They are out of cards though, so we got that going for us. That's that's pretty decent. Um. I'm going to play this and choose Valor Mode. Then I'm going to activate this to gain a resource. Yeah. And I'm going to crack this. And we want to dodge removal. If we get a brick out of them, we should be pretty well off here. This will at least just be like staring at them. So this will be a 5-3 to trade with their 7-whatever. They do have a large life total buffer, though, which kind of sucks. Hey, AP Stinker. Life's, life's swell, you know? To play the CCS tomorrow. Let's get a ring dark, sure. Don't really care about that. This is just a ship with the squad. Really? Okay, sure. Gain a charge is the last mode on that. That seems decent. Crackling clash, you say? Oh, almost certainly just attacking with this then and then crackling clashing. This is a quick action, right? No, it's a basic action. Well, I'm glad I checked that. So let's have this fight this. He gained six life because it does have life drain. 
then pass the turn here. Yep. And I'm not going to save us because, again, I kind of want this card that's in my hand. This bounces here. Gain a charge. Ooh, mama's home. I don't think it's worth jamming this in here too, because this is gonna allow me to play the Siege of Source next turn anyways. We gotta dodge like Twilight River in for a little bit here. Dodge Twilight River for a turn or two, we should be good. Alright, naive lacking, that's fine. Next turn we get to add Siege of Source to the table and then our clock becomes pretty quick. That's Dece. So if I attack with both of the, if I attack with all three of these, so if I attack with two of these, this has a three cost, and this is a two cost, but if I attack with all of these, I can play both of them, so that sounds more than reasonable. We'll just salt check, probably block here, eat there, yep, take five. Let's play out both of these. Again, could probably still lose a Twilight Reverend here. If they don't hit Twilight Reverend or removal this turn, the game's probably over. Canyon, that makes uh, Valor, right? Yep, that's fine. You're going to have a 4-4, four, four, so these three nerds can all still attack. I'm ready to get three looks at stuff this turn. Yeah, block with that one. Gosh, that's a good draw. All right, well, you know. If he wants to eat this, then he needs to chump here, and then he takes nine, so I think I'm okay with that. So if he wants to eat my two, two, then he's probably taking nine. Probably wants to trade here, or maybe even use these two to trade up into here, or these two eat the Mama Yeti. Nope, yep, eat that, chump there. Yep, take nine. Go ahead and activate this, void this, and this. Our draws came together well these games. Alright, save us was good. Have yet to... Look at that. Get our AA Ghost Blade Duelist here. For our bronze, we're bronze three now in limited. Watch out, we're coming. We're coming for you. Get him, got him good. Let's play another game. Turn my Facebook notifications on. One of my buddies is. Stay at my house this weekend. I'm supposed to be here shortly. I might stream some poke. It's one of my my buddy that got me into the Pokemon cards. Got some Pokemon cards. Super super excited to play out some Zeranesses. Pimp that Yodel deck. Pimp my Yodel deck. Top one limited season. It's season one. This is this is season one. It's season one, 2017. Good morning, afternoon, and good night to everyone wherever you're in the world. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday or Saturday. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your time here with us. Let me battle some Hex TCG. If you haven't been by the stream before, welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. We stream all sorts of digital and paper TCGs on here on this channel. Hex, Pokemon, Magic, uh, Eternal, Nova Blitz, lots of different things we try off and on. So thanks for stopping by. If you're enjoying the content, remember you can show that support by using the follow and subscribe buttons below the, screen, below the stream. Subscriptions are the absolute best way you can show your support for the stream. We probably are going to do Pokemon. Ryan mentioned wanted to do a, a two-headed Pokemon stream.
Like, these cards are wild. I don't know if you've anyone if you haven't watched me stream Pokemon before. It's like the the artwork on these cards is just like it's like the full the art is like the full frame. It's just like not just in the picture. Like this one, this one. Is just, some of them get hard to read at times. These aren't even the full art cards. These are just like the normal EX Pokemon. It's like bursting out of the frame. I don't think it's reasonable to expect to grind into top 64 with Yodel, but it's plenty reasonable to just play it grinding into Cosmic. Or at the very least, grind through Platinum for all of the latter rewards, I think. I don't think that's unreasonable at all. Dex a fine power level. And also keep in mind that it's going to get easier to work your way up through the ladder the later it gets in the season. Draft Q, oh Draft Q, I just want to play my 1-0 Draft Deck, this Draft Deck, Draft 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 Deck. We so greedy, we cut the 17th shot, we got so many fireballs, It is fantastic. I agree. Pokemon question, is expanded non-rotating or extended like in Magic? I'm actually not sure, Wizard Kids. I'm actually actually unsure about if, uh, if what's the what's the dealio there. Yeah, the cards are really sweet. Uh, seven. Four, six, I plan on streaming more Eternal soon. Maybe, I guess their, their ladder just resets. Maybe we'll play some Construct on their ladder. The, the problem with Eternal is that um, the the draft drafting draft content for Eternal isn't particularly popular. The YouTube videos don't get a lot of views, and I don't get a lot of people watching for the stream. And the Constructed in Eternal is very, very expensive. So I don't know that I really enjoy enjoy it for that, those reasons.
Man, I guess... I guess we'll give this queue a few more minutes, but it's a little brutal tonight. Hey, we got a live one. Yeah, the old bronze mirror match. Huh. Could technically play a fireball on two with the Ardent Decree. Don't think we want to do that, though. And play this and play this out for wild. I wouldn't fault anyone for mulliganing this hand. Yeah, this draft format isn't super popular right now. We've had a hey, there's a feral squeaker. Um, we've been in the same the same draft. Ooh, you know. That might have been loose. Maybe I want to play the fireball sooner, but I'm probably playing the feral squeaker. Oh, 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 crap. That was, I'm just talking and playing and thinking all at the same time. It's just not working out. Should have sacked that to make a valor. Now I'm just going to be probably never have an opportunity to do it like a big, dumb, stupid. I am, I am the biggest, dumbest, stupid. -ed. All right. Didn't get Twilight River into down three. Another, another blood diamond, another blood diamond deck. Gruesome deed, rude. My poor little guy. He just, he just wanted to grow up big and strong and attack. Why, why you got to be like that opponent? He was, he was gonna get a third, a third wild. Uh, I think I'm just playing the brood out here. Let's get my beat down on. My guy has been brought to justice. Good evening, Trex. I have the hammer. It's hammer time. All right, so we're going to do this. Make a Valor. We're going to Valor this up right away so we can play around a second Bring to Justice because Bring to Justice does not kill Valor's troops. I'm not going to put this next Valor on it, though. I think we're just going to hang tight for now in case they have a different form of removal. That card's not particularly good. I wonder if they've got some bomb socketed troops. Um, yeah, I was going to say, probably going to wait, huh? So I don't think they're going to block my Ruthless Intimidator with this. And, um, I think, especially since they did that, and I think there's a non-zero chance that they reach this again next turn with their champion power. And if that's the case, I want to fireball it then. I could get in trouble if he has like the take flight, but then if he take flights that I can blazing hammer it the following turn after taking five. So I think I'll risk it for the chance of getting a second champion activation out of him. Yeah, great. Look at that. Picked him up and read him like a book. I'll play this out. Um, I attack for... Oh, you know, that's sloppy. I have assault cards in my deck. Oh, this is... Uh, that's super sloppy. Um, I think I'm going to hammer and then champion power here. I don't really mind losing either of these, I don't think. Yeah, didn't lose. Didn't lose my Mama Yeti or my Rocket Rider. Crap. We've only got one troop in there. That's fine. All right, there's the Twilight Reverend. That's unfortunate. Oh, 
I'm playing Mama Yeti and Crunch here. Uh, I have not dropped any frames. Opponent concedes to the Mama Yeti. Okay. They must not realize how good their card is. That's all right. Save. So it was a little sloppy there, but ended up winning anyways. Uh See, it's great. It's got a reasonable curve. It's got uh two brute crown bashers. Gonna mess them up, mess, mess, mess them up, yeah, mess, mess, mess them up, yeah. The only way this hand could get better is if it found a third and a fourth brute crown basher. It's got our Atachi brute in the opener, a Yachi brute, perhaps. No turn two play, strong for us. Our resources are working particularly well. We have a slow shard here in Primal Prism, but we'll get to play our second brute on turn three along with that. Play this guy out, which the first one is just a 2 on, but the second one, when we play it, will deal 2 damage to a champion or troop. Please play something that this kills. Nothing. Okay. Shard is great here because it allows me to attack with both of these and put my a touch and put this brute to 1. And then I can go play my 4-3, play my 2-1, deal 2 to you. And pass the turn. They must have Twilight Reverend on four, right? Their hand just didn't do anything on one, two, three, so they have to have Reverend on four. No, just Skittering Dark. Well, no blocks here. Learned my lesson. Oh, just a gruesome death. Sure. That's fine. Still in a great spot. Another fireball, you say? That probably locks the game up. Play this out for a ruby threshold. Play Matinkatron. Seven power, six points of reach in hand. Time to light them up. They're on fire. Watch them cast a... Is there a sweeper in this format? There isn't, right? I don't think there is. I guess Clash of Steel is technically a sweeper. All right. Ooh, ooh. Bronze Division Tier 2. Let's brush my shoulder off a little bit here, you know? Heading heading quickly towards silver. I think we I think we finished last season at silver four. And limited. Ah, the old bronze gold pair up. How is this even fair? Opponent's this mighty gold player, and I'm just down here in the lowly bronze. I think this can keep. We just hit like one wild, we can go to, we have two draws at a wild threshold. Opponent mulligan. Haha, -ha, joke's on you. Shouldn't mulligan. This hand might be loose. It's got Brute Crown Bash around too. Who doesn't love to bash people? We've triggered this card two more times than I thought we were going to trigger it tonight already. Dread Harvest. Okay, Dread Harvest is actually pretty decent because that means when we draw the first wild, we automatically have the second for Smash Magus. And then this Brute Crown Basher plus this are going to give us plenty of scrounge fodder for these two. Am I trading here? I feel like I'm trading here. I'm going to feel real bad if we draw another basher, but I feel like the chances of that happening are fairly low. All right, Drew Blazing Hammer. Has unfortunately, have not drawn the wild threshold that we need, so I'm going to ship the turn back here. Count as a sweeper? Yeah, I guess it does, technically. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's underworld aligned. That's... Huh. Diamond Wild, ah, oh, jeez, they're gonna die to this card real fast. The Moda Trike Driver, he takes no prisoners. Don't play another driver, God bless. All right, just hit me for five and pass the turn, please. All right, Wild Shard, Wild Shard, Wild Shard. All right, I'll take a Fireball. Uh, I'm just gonna do this now so we don't get combat tricked out of it. They could have like the Take Flight card or something like that. So let's just be conservative and kill their guy. 
our hand is pretty stocked if we get to play it. I guess it depends on what the contents of their leftovers are. This is flight on attack. It's another flying unit. Okay, uh, this is flying. I'm going to die pretty quick here, though. Come on. Can I get a wild? Well, that's technically a wild at some point. It's probably a little bit too slow. We're dead in three with these, probably a little bit faster than that with the bunch of factor in cards that they could have in their hand. I guess if I draw a resource, we can blazing hammer one of these. Oh, this makes a temporary resource too. So I can hammer this next turn. Wow, that's good. Oh, that's a beating. All right, we need to hit a wild. That's unfortunate. Not coming back from that. Is this the match where we board in the giraffe? Yep. Yep. We drafted this just for this particular occasion. I think I'm going to cut smashy. Yeah, I'm going to cut smashy. Double, double wild. Probably a little bit greedy to have in the first place. Roll chest. I don't even know how to roll a chest, so that's probably not going to happen. I mean, we already got two wins in this draft, so, like, it's almost a free roll. If we win this one, it's for all the packs and glory. You get, like, six packs. It's so, so much loot. I wouldn't even know what to do with it. Keep this hand. Again, no wild. No wild. His Tinkertron in the opener, though. Which is nice. Has a proactive two-drop play. If we draw another ruby, we have a fireball that's accessible. Kadok. Uh, yeah, there's another ruby. Means we can go this into Tinker. Play this, grab a Valor. Play hammer on curve. Looks like they're auto passing here. Play my Tinkertron. You have to have a three drop here, right? Yeah, it's like no, no one, no two. You have to have a three in this format. It seems like. I guess we weren't particularly aggressive game one. Um, hmm. I think I'm just fireballing this so I can. Activate this for a threshold. Grab wild. Play this, play this, play this. That seems reasonable. This crackling clash doesn't seem great. We really don't have enough large troops for it. Probably just shouldn't have played it. Hey, you don't have any diamond in this game, so you know. Hashtag skill game. Swift Strike's annoying. Uh, probably just hammer that down. Play this, and I'm going to go ahead and burn this now, since I don't really care about Crackling Clash. Oh, lost the one card in our hand that we kind of cared about. That's sad. Hit you for 7. Knock you down to 11. Technically, this plus this is a build-our-own removal spell, so that's nice. Hopefully, they just have six diamond cards in hand right now, like we had six wild cards last game. Ooh, ooh, that's good for us. And, unfortunately, screw beats Flood. I think we're just passing the turn here. It gives them opportunities to draw diamond, but we really just don't have anything going on. I don't really want to trade this down. Brute, sure. In a charge. Alright, well, there's a giraffe. This gives us a charge when we play it at some point here. Oh, this? This can kill this now. Huh. I'm going to pass for a turn, see what we do. 
This eats this for free. Mm, there's a diamond. Or life like a diamond. He's getting a pass here again. Yep, okay, sweet. Fruit crown, basher, you say. I'm going to play that. And I guess I'm just passing the turn again here. We're kind of at a stalemate. This way, if I draw a third basher, that trigger can kill this bolt spasm. I was kind of surprised when they saw this in game one and it had the Underworld Allegiance. Usually these colors don't have uh, sufficient... That's going to kill my 4-2. They don't have sufficient Underworld... Ooh, you're killing my Brute Crown Basher. Sure. Deal. Burn this now. So part of me wants to just play this and use this right away to try and find action, but another part of me knows I should wait, since we're not behind on board to, like, have to do something right now, I should wait until, uh, until I have something bad in my hand that I would like to discard. Well, draft's looking good. Alright, well, let's play this, and then... Again, I feel like we're at parity, so I'm going to wait and try and find until I have two cards in my hand. It's just like my probability of like turning this into two good cards is reasonable. We've played eight resources, and this is nine, so there's only... Um, how many resources in my deck? Uh, there's 16, so there's only seven more resources and 22 cards. So we've got a pretty high action density left in our deck. Llamify is pretty good. It's going to let him start attacking with this guy. That puts pressure on us to do something right away. Brood of our own, sure. I think I have at least one more turn to wait. So this can't be blocked by Underworld troops. We don't have any of those. Take another three in the air, yep. Yay, board stalls. Hey, do we have two troops in here? I do, right? And this is scrounge two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get out of here, brood crown bashers. Would not be surprised to see a fireball or something out of them. But if not, hit you for four. All right, sweet. None of his guys block flyers. So this is hitting for six next turn. And probably just like hammer. Oh, he can champ power this. All right, and that, that can block this now. Still probably want to champ power my guy. I say not champ powering has to mean uh, some kind of trick. Uh, I don't really care about brood crown bashers since two of those are gone. So let's draw and discard. I mean, I guess I'll play it out because it's better than doing nothing. Let's uh, pass the turn here. No blocks. So drawing Brute Crown Bashers also removal spell for this now. We have one of those left in our deck. Uh, second Grave Bane is real good. Means he can double block here. And then nothing happened. Nothing gets through for us. Mammy Yeti, you say. Am I just supposed to jam Mammy here? If I jam Mammy and attack with this and this and this, you're supposed to wait one more turn. I'm going to wait one more turn. Just hold this back. We have plenty of resources here. Take another hit for three. This is also giving them outs to draw resources, though, too. We draw a fireball, we just like alleviate pressure and we're back to a board stall. Remember that time I burned a crackling clash on a bolt spasm that didn't matter? And I could totally be using it to like... Could totally be using it to kill one of these two fours otherwise. Uh, hopefully we draw a piece of action next turn. 
So we've got one shard in the bin, and then 12. So we've drawn 12 out of 16 resources so far. I guess we've seen more cards in our deck than they have. Have we played any fireballs yet this game? One. We've drawn a lot of our removal. We've also drawn half our deck, so... Okay. Fire in the hole is pretty good. Um, let's play this and then attack with enough guys that fire in the hole can kill one of these gargoyles. Gotta make sure I don't die in the crackback. So this, I should attack with three things here. Attack like this. It seems fine. I can attack with this too, and it leaves me one, two, three, four blockers. Yeah, he's probably gonna have to trade off enough stuff here. Yeah, I'm just gonna attack like this. So it's five to something. I don't think we want to leave ourselves dead on the crack back. Wow, discarded a shard instead of champ powering. Okay, that's aggressive. I don't think I want to leave myself dead on the crack back. They could, they could block in such a way that this Mama Yeti ends up being kind of lethal. Although I guess that's probably pretty unlikely. Very likely they're just like double blocking to here. I probably would have trash muted on their turn, honestly, because it gives them a random ruby. Excuse me, a random ruby common. Like, it could have been something that they could have played out. So, figure out the math, figure out what you want to play around here. Fire in the hole is a good pickup. Ideally, we put them in a spot to kill some fireball here, but that's probably not likely. I'm not even sure what their optimal blocks are here. It's probably, like, this here, this here, and, like, these two on here, and, like, these two on here. So they lose Lava Shaper, Dawn Scout, and one of these... And then I fire in the hole this, eat the other one. And then they have trike, trike, shaper. Okay, so they're blocking this to here, this and this to here. And then this to here, and then this to here. Okay, so I'm going to fire in the hole one of these gargoyles. So my flyer lives. Damage. I'd like to kill the 4-3. Alright, your move. Dead to fireball here. Because this flies. They have to champ power this because it's lethal. Oh geez, we actually have to draw something then, right? Because this is this is lethal. They can champ power it though. And then this just hits us twice in the air. That's unfortunate. And I definitely lost myself this game when I burned the Crackling Clash too early on their 3-1. That really didn't matter because the board was gummed up anyways. I should have saved the removal spell for when they found something like this. We would have just had infinite time this game. They wouldn't have been hitting us at all. This Grim Skull Tactician would have just, like, been killed on sight if I would have saved the Crackling Clash. Pokemon! Yeah, my buddy my buddy is almost here. We might play some Pokemons after he gets here. That could be up too late. I gotta play the CCS in the morning, but we might play some Pokemons before I go to bed. He'll be here to yell at me in person instead of yell at me through chat with delay. Man, if they come out of the tank here and kill me, I'm gonna be real annoyed. They might be thinking on, like, champ power this and then, like, ship with the squad, but then, like, I just take... No, that doesn't really do anything. I just champ power this, hit me for three, pass the turn, make me have something. Another motor trike driver, sure. I can understand how that complicates your math, but unless your other card does something too, you're still just supposed to do this here. And we've got a few live draws. First blood. Okay, yep. Does that make us dead? That might make us dead, so... Yeah, we're exactly dead to that. Because all of these can attack... And they can... Okay, well, opponent has missed on board lethal. I'm pretty sure, right? Because they make this not be able to block, and then I can block one, two, three. Yeah, they missed on board lethal. Okay, fair. 
Uh, do this, and I'm dead, so do this. We're probably still dead, but... Oh, they're playing around a card in my hand. That's fair. And I'm probably still dead regardless, so... They don't know if this is a blank. GG's opponent. It's a little bit a little bit short. Ended up using our misusing our resource there to start, so got a little a little bit punished for that. Still two one in the draft. You know, mediocre draft. We didn't have any rares actually. Triple fireball was hot though. That card's real real good. All right, I'm going to call it for Hex for the evening.